Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now have a look at the major regions of the human brain. The human brain is divided into three main parts. Forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. So these are the three major parts of the human brain. Because see, the brain is very complicated as I told before also. So now studying each and every corner was difficult. So that is why classification was put into place. So the brain was divided into three different parts. Now then each part was studied and again each part was studied in detail. So first let us look at these three parts. So this is how the human brain looks like. So forebrain. This is the forebrain. The yellow colored part is the forebrain. Then we have midbrain. Midbrain the name itself says mid. That means middle. So this is the midbrain and then we have this one as the hindbrain. So these are the three major sections of the human brain. Now in each of these sections we have different areas which perform some specific functions. So we will study that in the next few slides. So let us start our discussion with the forebrain. Now the forebrain is again broadly classified into two parts. The first part is cerebrum and the second part is the olfactory lobes. So these are the two broad classification of the forebrain. So let us now look at cerebrum. So where do we have the cerebrum? Now, cerebrum is very well developed in humans. So, cerebrum forms a, a quite big part of the brain and it performs many different functions. It governs all the mental abilities like thinking, memorizing, learning, consciousness, etc. So, it is the seat of intelligence. So, that is what makes human beings special than all other animals, right? Because the cerebrum in human beings is very well developed. So, they, are, they have got brains, they have got intelligence. So they can think and they can find out new ways, they can invent new things, right? So that is the speciality of human beings. Now, enables to understand things through sense organs. Now, there are this cerebrum itself is divided into different lobes. Each lobe has a specific function. For example, it has the occipital lobe which is for visual perception. For example, whatever we see, for example, we see a anything we see a tiger so uh, what what our eyes do it just sees the tiger but how do we know that whatever we are seeing is a tiger and it is not a cat so it is our brain which actually interprets that the object which we are seeing is a tiger right so this visual perception is brought about by the occipital lobe so here if you see this entire part is the cerebrum this entire part is the cerebrum. So in that, this green colored region is the occipital lobe. So this is the occipital lobe which is used for visual perception. Next is the temporal lobe which is for auditory perception. That means whatever we hear, how do we know what we heard? That is again interpreted by the brain. So where do we have the temporal lobe? This red colored structure is the temporal lobe next is frontal lobe for muscular activities so frontal lobe the lobe which is in front so this is the frontal lobe so this is about all muscular activities i mean for example somebody told us our teacher in the class told us that raise your hands so who actually heard what the teacher told it was heard by the ears but who interpreted what we heard? The temporal lobe of the brain. So the temporal lobe of the brain actually understood what the teacher told. So now the brain will have to instruct the muscles of the hands to raise the hand. So which lobe will instruct? The frontal lobe. The frontal lobe will actually instruct the muscles to raise. Then comes the parietal lobe which is which controls the touch, temperature, smell, consciousness. So where is parietal lobe? The blue colored lobe is the 
parietal lobe. So the cerebrum is divided into these four lobes, each of which perform a specific function. And also the cerebrum is the seat of intelligence. So we think, memorize, learn, all these things comes out of cerebrum. And this is very well developed in humans. The other part is the olfactory lobes. It is present in the bottom side of the brain. So in this picture, I mean, this view of the brain, how is this view? This view is the sideways view of the brain, right? So from one side, we are seeing the brain. So now here, under this frontal lobe, I mean, just on the bottom side of the brain is present the olfactory lobes. So maybe in the bottom side, so which we are not able to see in this picture. So in that bottom side are present the olfactory lobes. Olfactory, the word olfacto comes from smell. So it is the center of smell and it is not well developed in humans. I mean, human being, it, it is present in human beings. That is why we can smell. I mean, we have the sense of smell, but it is not very well developed. But in certain animals, the olfactory lobes are very well developed. For example, dogs, they have a very great sense of smell. Even a slightest bit, they can smell it very well. Right? So these two are the mo most important, I, I mean, they are the major parts of the forebrain. Let us now look at the midbrain. Midbrain consists of nerves connecting the hindbrain to the forebrain. That was very clear from this picture because this was the midbrain. So this midbrain is actually trying to connect these two, the forebrain with the hindbrain. So it, is act, it actually acts as a mediator between forebrain and hindbrain. Let us now look at hindbrain. Hindbrain again consists of three different parts. The first part is cerebellum. So the part of the forebrain was cerebrum and the part of hindbrain is cerebellum. So where is cerebellum? So this blue colored structure is the hindbrain. So this portion of the hindbrain is cerebellum. What does it do? It coordinates the voluntary movements. It also maintains posture and body balance. That means there are whatever voluntary movements means, the movements which happens at our will. I mean, we can control those movements. For example, if I want to walk, I will walk. If I want to run, I'll run. If I want to eat, I'll eat. So all these movements are controlled by us. So they are known as voluntary movements. So cerebellum, this portion of the brain controls the voluntary movements. It also maintains posture and body balance, right? For example, the posture of our body, the position of our body, how we have to stand, how we have to sit, how we have to dance. So all those postures, body balance, I mean, everything related to movements are controlled by the cerebellum. The next part is pons. Pons, where is it present? This portion is Pons. Pons is responsible for regulating respiration. So respiration is something which happens on its own. I mean, we do not control it much, right? So it has to happen all the time because it is a process which is needed for sustaining our life. So pons controls the respiration part of human beings. And the third part, and the third part is medulla oblongata. So what does medulla oblongata do? Where, first of all, where is it present? So this is medulla oblongata. So this medulla oblongata is often referred as the brain stem. It coordinates the involuntary movements. For example, there are certain things which happens on its own. For example, the beating of the heart. It, we do not want that, okay, now the heart should beat and then heart, now the heart should not. So these are involuntary movements. They are not under our control. They happen on their own. So medulla oblongata controls the involuntary movements and it is the regulatory center for swallowing, coughing, sneezing, vomiting because these are also certain things which are not under our control. For example, we sneeze. It is, it is not under our control. The sneezing comes on its own. Similarly, we vomit. When there is the, our stomach is up, upset or some problem is there inside our body, we vomit. So that is also a natural process. I mean, we do not do it on our own. So basically, if you see, hindbrain is all about controlling different types of movements. Cerebellum controls the voluntary movements. Medulla oblongata controls the involuntary movements. So the control of movements is all handled by the hindbrain. Whereas the thinking part, the... Uh, 
the perception of sight or perception of hearing all those things are controlled by the forebrain and midbrain connects the nerves from forebrain to hindbrain simple so at least you got some idea about the human brain what are the different parts of the human brain and what do, what are their functions right thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again